Hello my friends! If you're new here, my name is Rachel and welcome to the channel. And if you are returning, hi, welcome back. It is so nice to see you again. And today's speed build is a special one because we are working on Pottsfield's pumpkin patch, which I am so excited for. This was not the build that I had planned. Um, I was actually going to do the shopping district, but I was struggling so hard. I was freaking out. I had a little bit of a meltdown because I'm having kind of a hard time with this island, if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I feel like I'm running out of space I can like feel the edges of this island closing in on me so I was freaking out and I just decided to do a build that I knew I would have fun with and I just decided to go with the pumpkin patch so without rambling too much longer let's get some nice cozy cottage core farm core autumn vibes with this adorable little pumpkin patch so let's head on over to the space first things first we are going to go through and figure out the layout of the trees and the bushes and things that we are going to put alongside the river originally i wanted to go through and do more road pathing along the riverside but the vibes have changed the pottsfield pumpkin patch was supposed to be a bit more of a commercial area where i was going to to use the museum as like a faux church backdrop and have you know some hay rides and some wheat fields and things like that to give it more of that commercial feel but like I said the vibes have changed I went through and did my over the garden wall watch party which was so so much fun we were definitely struggling on space because we live in a small apartment so we went through and we combined our sectional couch with a futon that we have in our shared like gamer space and yeah it was super fun we turned it into like this giant bed and we covered it in blankets and pillows and it was so cozy and we were all curled up together watching the show i made some like handheld mini apple pies that turned out so good and they were so cute and it was just it was such a good time but going through and re-watching the show definitely gave me some ideas for the island I figured out so many cute little Easter eggs that I could add to the island but I am running very low on space as I keep mentioning or at least it feels like I am so there is some stuff that I wouldn't be able to add but I knew that the pumpkin patch had to be a lot more over the garden wall themed and I actually got a really cute comment on one of my past videos where someone left a very nice suggestion where we could go through and add a barn to the pumpkin patch as a little bit of an ode to the show since when Wirt and Greg go to Pottsfield there is a little bit of a festival slash ritual dance going on inside of a barn where all of the spooky pumpkin people are hanging out And I just thought that, that was such a cute little addition and I really wanted to make sure I had the space to include a barn build, which you will see how that barn comes together in a little bit. It is kind of crazy, not gonna lie. I was not really feeling all of the barn tutorials that I found online. I kind of felt like they were a little too big and the color schemes weren't exactly right. So I completely freehanded this barn that we build later and I am so proud of it. So do stick around to see how I built the barn out in case you want something a bit similar. It is a bit of a smaller barn so it's great for some space saving areas if you want to include a barn but aren't working with a lot of tiles like I was in this area but back to my original thought um, like I said this area was supposed to originally be commercialized and I was going to pull the city elements uh, outward the pumpkin patch was originally going to go on the left hand side of the island I believe but when I was going through and mocking up the island um, I got some advice and everyone was suggesting that the pumpkin patch go back here there was supposed to be a graveyard and a train track up here as in reference to the show but once again just couldn't couldn't fit it it was not working and so I decided to go with this instead and that's why I went with this forested area because the pumpkin patch is supposed to be a bit more rustic a bit more vintage and even though there's not technically a pumpkin patch in the TV show I kind of just built it in what I think the pumpkin patch style would have looked like in the show um, in the city of Pottsfield uh, there are pumpkin patches like lining the roads and things like that but nothing like a pick your own pumpkin patch uh, which is what this area is supposed to more so be like um, but yeah so I decided to go with this rustic theme over here I drew a lot of inspiration from the little forest that we had built near resident services in the last video the one that was by the beach I just thought it was so pretty and it kind of definitely still pulls in that northeastern United States kind of riverside look that I'm trying to go for in these more forested areas 
As we move away from resident services and start building in areas around the islands that are farther away from resident services, we're going to get more into this organic natural style of decorating, which I am a lot more used to doing. Um, I think I've mentioned before that the only islands I have ever done in the past have been more organic, more rustic, more cottage core, and the only island I have finished has been a cottage core island. So this was definitely more familiar for me than any of the other decorations that we've done so far. It's just like so fun to just kind of be able to throw whatever on the ground and just completely clutter it up. I think that it is definitely a nice switch up from having to do such like rigid structured like roads with only like certain items that we can place that are more city themed so it was just really fun to be able to go through and do things like adding this like log that looks like it has fallen over from a rotten tree and adding a bunch of weeds and different topiaries and things and just really going through and layering these different items to make them look very natural of course i had to add my decoy ducks because this is a riverside area and i just i think it's so cute I just I love this spot so much. I also wanted to go through and start adding some decayed trees to these spots as well. I wanted to use them a bit more in the city side of the island, but it's just such a big item. I don't know why Nintendo makes some of these items so large. It makes them very hard to use. There's a ton of items in this game that I feel like are way too big than what they should be on terms of like how many tiles they take up. And the decayed tree is definitely one of them. It's so irritating to try and decorate around it, but I think we get it to work in this spot. I also put the leaves underneath it to maybe look like all the leaves had fallen off the tree. And I'm just going through and placing some different barrels and things. But yeah, we're just adding a bunch of stuff left and right. It's honestly so interesting how you can kind of just choose any items that you want and put them down and they'll look good if you're trying to do this type of style. There's really no rhyme or reason to the way that I do this type of decorating. So if you're like watching this and being like, how do you know what items that you want to put here? I don't. I just kind of grab whatever and I put it all down and I'm like, hey, does this look good? And if it does, then I keep it. And if it doesn't, then we switch it around. Um, this is like the second little iteration of this forest area. The first one was very similar, don't get me wrong, but I realized I was not recording. I had to go through and demolish the forest and rebuild it because I'm a goober and I am still trying to figure out the whole like software recording thing that I have going on. I have a very interesting setup. I feel like there's a way that I could be making these videos that would make them so much more seamless and easier to create, but I'm not doing that. I'm just kind of doing it however I've decided to do it. Um, I also have really, really bad internet. I have this like internet plan that my apartment complex like kind of forced me into. For some reason, there's only one type of internet that is available in my area, which doesn't make much sense because I am living in the same area that I grew up in as a child. Um, I had a house like right down the road from the apartment complex that I live in, and I had a completely different internet. But for some reason, my apartment complex says, uh, no ma'am, you're only allowed to have AT&T. And I'm like, but I don't want AT&T. But I have to have AT&T. And I have to use this like 50 megabytes per second for $50 a month plan, which 50 megabytes per second is horrible. Like it's so bad. I've like had to go through and use my mobile hotspot on my phone to be able to make some of these videos just because at some points my internet just cuts out completely. And it's definitely uh, very, very frustrating. But I have completely rambled over some of this stuff. There is no reason for me to be talking about my internet right now. <laughs> so enough of all of that. Uh, for the build itself right now, we are going through and making the entrance to the pumpkin patch. I knew that I wanted the entrance to not necessarily have a grand feel the way that like the entrance to the island is grand, but more so just go through and kind of give it that like farm type of entrance where we have a little bit of a country fence going on. I have a bunch of barrels layered nearby. And of course we have the plane lights party arch. You know me, I gotta have one in every single video. But yeah, so we went through and added that. I'm also going through and just layering different pumpkin items. I shuffled these items around quite a bit just because I just wanted to make sure that the layering was seamless. I didn't want anything to be majorly cut off by like the trees and stuff like that. And so I just play around with this quite a bit. I also really like mixing in the actual like spooky items with real pumpkins 
because the sizing is not only different, but so is the colors. It's kind of weird how when you go through and use the white pumpkin to do the monochrome pumpkin variations, they're more of like a gray, which I'm not a huge fan of. I include some gray pumpkins here and there, but not very much just because like it's such a weird color scheme. So I really like the creamy white of the pumpkins, and so that's why I've just been like dropping white pumpkins instead of using like white jack-o'-lanterns. But here we are placing our first little bits of dirt pathing, which, you know, get used to this dirt path because you will be seeing a lot more of her as we move on to these rustic areas on the island. And I just love all the different variations of the path. I think that it is such a great idea and it has like such a nostalgic feel, especially like the actual path, like the path code. Um, I have been playing Animal Crossing since GameCube and those little like just circles of dirt give me such nostalgia for the GameCube game and I just I love it so much but I was definitely struggling with trying to find a autumn path that fit I didn't want something that was too cool toned or too warm toned and I also didn't want something that had a crap ton of leaves all over it just because I was running out of spots in my design catalog just running out of space left and right on this island and so yeah I wanted to go through and make sure that I found a path that could just take up its tiles and we could just leave it there um, not have to like download two different different versions of a pathway like I did for the road. But yeah, I really, really like this pathway. I think it's gorgeous. And all the codes that I use in this speed build will be posted down below. Some of them I am still trying to search for just because I will get into a mood where I'm just like down to start downloading like any code that I find and I don't keep track very well. I'm usually a really organized person, trust me, but this time around when it comes to path codes, I'll just like see something and download it and not like record it anywhere. So some of the designs that I use are similar like designer codes like it's from the same creator I just can't remember like who's who and who has made what so I am trying my best to get all of the codes that I've used in the description but it's really important for me to mention it just because the last two videos we were kind of using the same codes and this one the codes are going to be slightly different because we are moving into that more like rustic like area as well as all the different like pumpkin items and things but yeah I'm going through right now and just you know continuing on with the layering of our different pumpkin items I knew that I wanted this entrance to have a lot of pumpkins like this pumpkin patch is like we are here we have pumpkins come and buy them they got to have all their pumpkins on display so that was really important of course we have to add some leaf piles and that is pretty much it for this first little entrance spot so let's go ahead and move on to a different area this next area that we're working on is like a little checkout counter spot for the pumpkin patch where you can actually go and pay for your pumpkins. So maybe you go over to the pumpkin patch, you pick them out, you bring them over here, and whoever is behind the checkout counter will weigh them on this analog scale that I put down, which I feel like is kind of realistic for pumpkin patches. You know, they weigh them to see how expensive they are. And I actually haven't been to a pumpkin patch in like two years because ever since I moved into an apartment, it's kind of impossible to find a spot for them since I don't have a front porch. I do have a balcony since I'm on the second floor but that's just not like the type of spot for a pumpkin I feel like and I also live somewhere very hot so if I carve pumpkins they usually rot within like a day or two because it's so warm this past week though it's actually been kind of cool because it's been raining which has been so nice but it got all the way down to 57 degrees let's go for my celsius girlies I think that's like 13 degrees or something like that but anyway, um, I went off screen and did some pathing because it was just a lot of the same stuff, kind of just scooching items around and laying down this dirt path, which I think looks so good. I tried to make it realistic in the sense where like maybe people are walking around this area a lot. There's high traffic, which means that there would be a lot of like dirt pathing from where the grass has kind of just faded away because it can't really grow, which I feel like is pretty realistic. It's also kind of how pathing used to work in the older Animal Crossing games. If you didn't know or you're new to the Animal Crossing community and the older games, especially Wild World and I think a little bit of New Leaf as well, um, as of course as well as like the GameCube game, if you walked in certain areas enough throughout the days of being in your town, little dirt patches would show up and that's actually how pathing, like that's how we would like get our towns to look cute and have certain pathways. It wasn't until New Leaf came around that QR codes were used for designs and yeah, it was definitely a struggle back in the day. Like, I know New Horizons gets a lot of hate, but I think that the game has definitely expanded on previous ones. Um, I know some people say that New Horizons can feel a little lifeless, which don't get me wrong, this game has its pros and cons. Every game does. There's no such thing as like a perfect game. But at the same time, 
New Horizons like offers so much that we didn't have in previous games and I love that Nintendo has kind of catered to the designing community by making the design portal and making it to where you can have like extra slots and things like that and they kind of like streamlined the whole like design thing to help us out which I think is really nice. But yeah, I just went through and cluttered up the area with some different items like this hay bed that I customized in the pale green option to better match the lantern set as well as adding like the plant starts just because like maybe this place sells like pumpkin starters. I also added this super cute bag with the pumpkin design on it like maybe this pumpkin patch has their own like special fertilizer blend or they sell like I don't know like seeds or something like that uh, who knows. But yeah, I'm just going through and adding these different items and I just, I think the overall look is, is perfect. I think it's so, so pretty. I love how this area turned out. Like it's one of my favorite, favorite spots in the entire pumpkin patch. I can't wait to take pictures here. Here we are just putting the last final touches on this area. I decided to extend out the wooden wardrobes just a little bit because I thought it almost gave it like a shed like look, which I thought was pretty cool. Maybe this checkout area has like some boxes that are stored away for people who are lugging home a lot of pumpkins. But I am just cleaning up some of the excess tools that I have on the ground because I did go through off screen and build this cliff area, which you see goes all along the back as well as the left side. And it's not built out in this part, but I will extend the cliff down to the right as well because I knew that I wanted the pumpkin patch to almost be like surrounded by cliffs very closed in and kind of just help frame the space out a little bit. It looks a little silly right now but once we go through and fill the space in I think that it looks a lot more natural. But here I'm just going through and adding a single tile wide pathway because I wanted to enclose the pumpkin patch with a barbed wire fence. I was heavily inspired by a build that I saw on Pinterest that was created by AC Sky Diary over on Instagram, I believe. Um, I will pop the picture right up here on screen as well as link their socials down below. But yeah, this is such a cute little build. I loved the like different uses of items. I love how it wasn't just pumpkins it was pumpkins and the wooden bucket and like weeds and flowers and just all these different items to help break up the monotony of it just being nothing but pumpkins and I wanted to do something similar on a bigger scale for this pumpkin patch like you know maybe the pumpkin patch is overgrown a little bit it's getting a bit later in the season so maybe more of the pumpkins have been picked already so the weeds are taking over I decided to throw some flowers in the mix too because real pumpkin plants have these really cool like trumpet star like yellow flowers and while they don't have any yellow flowers on the island I thought that the orange cosmos look like they could be little pumpkin flowers so I decided to include those which I feel like it gives it such great texture but you will see that in a little bit right now I am going through and staggering some different pathing down I love how combining the dark dirt path and the more like sandy dirt path separates them still so they look like they can be rows of crops which I think looks really cool and so I wanted to go through and layer the different pathing so that way it had more of that farm like structure which I think looks awesome because we can of course still plant stuff on top of it versus like if we used a design code we couldn't put any plants on it sadly but now I'm just going through and layering the lighter pathing to give it that staggered farm road type of look which I just I absolutely love. I think that this area came out so cute. It's almost reminiscent of how I did builds back when crops were first released in the game. I think pumpkins were the first crop to be released and I just remember everybody in the Animal Crossing community being so so excited and everyone was doing these cute little pumpkin builds and it definitely gave me some nostalgia for the earlier game. But now you'll see that I'm going through and taking this little clover detail and staggering it all across the pumpkin patch and originally I just did that because I knew that I wanted to have some different codes on the ground to kind of give some visual interest to the original like pathway area and I found that actually if I put a pumpkin on top of this clover it looked like it had its own little like leaf stalk underneath which I thought looked so cool because the actual pumpkin plants in game have that little like leaf set underneath them and I thought that maybe these jack-o-lanterns could be turned around and looked like bigger pumpkins maybe but you saw that I went through and added the orange cosmos I plopped down a water bucket on the ground I'm going through and putting some rocks down as well because I feel like pumpkin patches can be pretty like rocky 
sticky and uneven for the most part. I actually remember a long time ago carving pumpkins on my front porch at my parents house when I was in high school and just taking the seeds and just like leaving them or maybe the pumpkins rotted like I like I mentioned earlier the pumpkins rotted probably and I think the seeds ended up in a planter bed out front and it actually ended up growing an entire pumpkin plant like we had no idea what this crop was that was growing in our front yard but it was going crazy there was vines all over the place there was the beautiful like yellow flowers and everything like that and sadly it never produced any pumpkins but I was like so amazed that just tossing a rotten pumpkin in the front yard made a pumpkin grow so that was pretty cool but I have talked over the fact that I have gone through and added some different weeds I decided to put some vines up against the cliff because you know obviously pumpkins have vines so maybe it looks like the pumpkins are kind of creeping up the pumpkin patch a little bit I also added some weeds and some different items the handy cart so maybe people can stack their pumpkins on top, some different barrels. I of course also wanted to add some gyroids. I just love the gyroids. I think that they're so cute. They're such like just funky little guys. Like they're just little dancing dudes. They're here for a good time. They're here for a long time and a good time because they've been around since the beginning and I just I think they're so so cute. I love decorating with them. But yeah, now I'm just going through and placing the pumpkin plants kind of at random. I do have a little bit of an order here. I mostly just wanted to make sure that I didn't have too many of the same type of pumpkin in the same spot. So I wanted to make sure I didn't have like a corner that was nothing but orange pumpkins. I wanted to make sure I didn't have like too many like triple pumpkin plants in the same spots because there is the different like levels of ripeness. You have of course the single pumpkin, the double pumpkin, and the triple pumpkin depending on how many times you've watched them I believe and this layout will change a little bit because I do go through and pick some of the plants off screen and try to water them just till like, I get some more variation with the amount of pumpkins that we have going on I had a lot of singular pumpkins and not a lot of like doubles or triples because I did not really take care of my plants before starting this build but that's okay in real life I try to take very good care of my plants because I love my plants I'm a plant girly for sure but I'm going through and you saw I added a flimsy shovel as a design piece I think it looks cool when it's standing up I think it's one of the few tools that actually looks natural when you place it as a decoration instead of using it as a tool because it kind of like sits upright so I think if you pair it with a dirt path code which I did in that little spot it makes it look like it's actually you know been shoved into the ground or something like that but this is the final result of the pumpkin patch for now for the most part I go through and just you know do a little shuffling change a couple things up here and there and yeah I, I just I love this spot I can't wait to hang out here I went through and decided to trade out this pumpkin for a spooky scarecrow again just to kind of like help with the height going on. I will admit it's a little difficult to traverse because there are so many items in the way so I think that's kind of why I went through and like shuffled things around before the beauty shots. But yeah, now we are moving on to this second side over here where I knew that I wanted to have a little bit of a pumpkin carving station. I don't know if that's necessarily like realistic for an actual pumpkin patch. But at least I've never been to a pumpkin patch where there has also been pumpkin carving going on. But I know sometimes you can buy like pre-carved pumpkins at pumpkin patches. I don't know why you would want to do that because carving pumpkins is so much fun. But you know, to each their own. So I decided I wanted to go through and make like a little spot where you could have some little photo moments with some friends if you ever decide to you know come over to the island or something um, I have plans on taking some pictures and this spot with a friend of mine I'm so excited but yeah I just cluttered it up with some different cutting boards and some different pumpkins just to make it look like they are in the process of being carved I also paired it with the ranch chairs because I love this shade of wood I think it's so pretty I went through and of course had to throw in a plain lights party arch like I said you know me we're going through and adding a tree over here and just cluttering up this space all together. I go through and shuffle this up a bit more because I do want this space to be accessible and it was kind of hard to get to with the way that I decorated this spot but I tested it out and it does work so you should be able to sit here and get some cute pictures. I'm just going through now and filling in the empty spaces on the ground because I do not like leaving tiles uncovered unless I absolutely have to. Of course, everything in moderation, but if there's a spot for a design code, I'm gonna put something there. 
because I just think it makes the areas look so much more full and just alive and like there's just something going on like there's a little environmental storytelling we've got a tree over here we've got some leaves on the ground does that mean that this tree is losing its leaves maybe who knows I think we're gonna extend that little storyline off to the side here with a leaf pile on top of some fallen leaves but yeah we are just going through and playing around with the pathing yet again and just you know doing a lot of the usual stuff I I really like this leaf code that I've been using I think it pulls in a lot more of the red leaf color when a lot of the autumn leaf codes that I've found tend to skew more yellow and gold I wanted something that had a lot more browns and reds in it because I knew that the trees on this island were going to be in more of that like rich red tone versus the more like brown tones that you find I think either earlier in the season or later I still can't quite remember but yeah just going through and extending this area out a little bit more just because I knew I wanted to add some more stuff to this spot Of course we had to add a little pail here for all the pumpkin guts that will need a place to go. So that is just hanging out to the side over here. Had to of course re-include the lily because flowers are very important. But yeah, I did change things up just a little bit because I was having some trouble getting to the table, but I love this end result. As you can see here, I added the cliffs off to the right side and I just feel like it helps enclose the space so much more, makes it feel so cozy. I also added this 3x4 jut out from the cliff side to act as the basis for the barn that we're about to build. So strap in my friends because this is going to get crazy because I was completely winging this whole part. I knew I wanted a barn, I knew that the barns that I was looking at online were way too big so I just grabbed some storefronts, I grabbed some simple panels and some miscellaneous items and I was like alright let's see what we can just put together. I knew I only had a small amount of space to work with and I have found in my experience that working with smaller spaces can lead to a lot of creative decisions that you normally wouldn't make and it just is such a great way to challenge yourself as a builder. So as you can see here, I went through and placed down a lot of planking to kind of act as a basis for the barn itself. Now I'm going through and adding some hedges as almost like some hay maybe that's like hanging out of a window. And I'm going through with some short simple panels that I have found a red barn code for. I didn't originally want this barn to be red since the barn in the show is more of a natural brown color, but I was struggling to find an exact match for the wood tones that could go on some simple panels, but now I'm just going through and lining some storefronts in the back to make the roofline look more complete when you're looking at it from different angles. And here I am adding some wooden bookcases that I have faced the opposite way to kind of look as though the barn is continuing off or maybe there's some more paneling off to the side or something. And originally I went through and used these plant partitions up against the wooden bookshelves to maybe look like hay or kind of match with the hedges up top. But those will be changed out pretty soon for some different items just because I feel like they look a little bit too city-esque for this barn area. But I'm going through and I pulled the storefronts out away from the area a little bit to kind of give them more of this like lip that's coming up against the barn door. Like I think it looks more like the barn door can actually be like slid because there's kind of this like joint. I don't know how to describe it but having the storefronts come out instead of being like perfectly lined up I think makes it look more natural. But yeah, I love how this turned out. It's just so small, so simple, but it gets the job done and it looks like a barn. And now we're just going to be building out a little mini wheat field. Originally, I'd wanted this wheat field to be a lot bigger, but once again, we're working with small spaces. And for the space that we have, I think it looks really cute. We do go through and kind of zhuzh it around a little bit when I come back over to this side. But I just really wanted to add one because I wanted to be able to use this winnowing machine because I've never been able to use it before. And I think it's honestly so cute. I don't know why. I just, I love her. But now we're going through and including a reception desk in this brown color, along with a phonograph that is currently playing KK Gumbo, but will be playing KK Ragtime later at some point. I just feel like KK Ragtime sounds a bit more like a festival song. 
and I included a gyroid of course as well as a toolbox like maybe there is some farming tools in there and I also have this little like pumpkin sign which I really like this pumpkin festival sign it looks almost like Enoch which is the big pumpkin guy from Pottsfield and I, I don't know I feel like it kind of like plays into over the garden wall a little bit I also included some candles because when it's nighttime this area glows and it gives it almost this like spooky eerie type of look which I feel like also plays into the spookiness of Pottsfield. really wanted to use this butter churn because I feel like they're just such good items for the farm area. It was a little bit difficult to work with so like I said things will be changing around quite a bit but we land on something that I am very happy with. I think that the area looks full for like I said the amount of space that we're working with. But you'll see here that I mess around with this skeleton for a little bit. Sadly Mr. Skellington does not stay in this area. But I wanted to leave a little Easter egg back here for people that have watched the show and it just wasn't working. Plus the scaling of it was very weird. Um, the skeleton is huge and having it next to the bookcase, like the skeleton is almost as tall as the bookcase and is very tall compared to the silo. So it just didn't really look right. So sadly I did not keep that, but just know that I was thinking about it. And now I'm going through and just moving these things around yet again. I apologize for the blue balloon that is flying across the screen. I don't ever have my slingshot in my pockets. I don't even think I own a slingshot in this game. I don't think that this playthrough I have once ever shot down a balloon. So I do apologize when they come across the screen. I know it can be a little annoying to look at, but it is what it is. I barely have enough room in my pockets for all the items that I end up using in these builds anyway. So try Trying to have a spot for a slingshot and a present can definitely take up some time. Um, but anyway, I'm going through and adding some dirt pathing just to make the wheat fields look like there is something going on because there are some spaces between these wheat fields. Uh, I wanted to try and stagger them a little bit to kind of give them more of a natural look and plus I was running out of wheat fields and I did not feel like going to another treasure island. But I scooch the winnowing machine off to the side of the wheat field and I just feel like it nestles so perfectly in that little spot. And yeah, I once again just really like how this spot turned out. Once again, I have gone off screen and taken care of some things as we are now moving on to the last little bit of this speed build. Uh, the pathing definitely did get the better of me and I added a lot. I have this little wooden plank area, some extra dirt pathing, as well as this little mini pumpkin patch off to the side here. I also did go through and kind of work on this wheat field a little bit more. I added a scarecrow as well as a wooden storage shed just because I felt like it kind of filled in the space a bit better. And now I'm just going through and putting down some barbed wire fencing to help mimic the pumpkin patch on the other side. I thought that it would be cool to include another pumpkin patch in this area because maybe this is a spot where if you pay to carve your pumpkins, this is where you would get the pumpkins from or, you know, maybe the pumpkins have grown a little wild throughout the pumpkin patch so these ones are more so like little strays that have just popped up out of nowhere but I'm just going through and layering it with some flowers and weeds. I also placed this little signpost that I think is meant for the museum but I thought it looked like a little barn so I decided to add it because it was pretty cute. But now we're moving on to this pumpkin contest, which I am so excited for. This is such a fun little build. I thought that like a storyline behind it could be that the different villagers in town placed bets on which pumpkin would grow the largest from the pumpkin patch, or maybe they're growing their own pumpkins at home and they will kind of enter their pumpkins into the contest. So of course I had to use the spooky carriage as like the big pumpkin centerpiece, like maybe that's the biggest pumpkin in town. And all of the villagers have placed their bets and things like that and they're going to decide a winner so leave in the comments down below who you think should win the pumpkin contest should it be kiki teddy mayel pudge vesta like all of the villagers that are living on this island just figure out who it would be like of all the villagers who would you want to win this pumpkin contest because i think that's pretty fun maybe whenever i go to decorate an interior i will put a trophy in their house to show that they are the ones that won the contest so i will leave that vote to you guys down below 
I have once again rambled over everything. I'm just going through and layering different pumpkin items. Since this is a little pumpkin contest, I want there to be a lot of pumpkin things going on around the area. Just because maybe like everyone in town has given a pumpkin to be entered into this contest. Or maybe there was a lot of entries for ones that they guessed would be the biggest. So I just wanted to include a decent amount. And I'm going through and once again just layering different items. Mixing some stuff up from what I had originally put down. And yeah, I'm going through and adding some design codes and things just to fill out this area a little bit better. I really love putting the fallen leaf design code underneath trees because obviously we're in the like leaf season where all the leaves are falling and things like that and I feel like it kind of like plays into all of the leaves that you see falling all over the place. You know there's got to be leaf piles so we got to put some on the ground. But yeah, we're just filling this area out. Um, we had this little hay bed over here. And originally I was struggling to figure out what table I wanted to put here because I knew I wanted to kind of cover up the wheels on the big pumpkin a little bit. I didn't really want it to be seen as a carriage so much as maybe a pumpkin on like a little wheelbarrow or a little track of some kind to maneuver it around. But yeah, I went through and decided to use, I think the wood plank table is what it's called. It just looks really rustic. I love the shade of brown. I feel like it fits in this area. Now I'm going through and cluttering up this little back corner because you can never forget about these little spots. I feel like this is a pretty telltale sign of if you have fully gone through and decorated an area is making sure that every little nook and cranny, and no this is not a nook's cranny sponsor, <laughs> but every little nook and cranny is filled with an item. Once again I'm going through and covering any empty spaces with some design codes and next we are going to be placing these absolutely adorable little standees. I thought that this would be another great ode to Pottsfield because um, little spoilers here but Enoch the big pumpkin guy that kind of runs Pottsfield is actually a black cat in disguise and so having this little like face cut out that has the two black cats dancing around a pumpkin I thought was like a really good ode to the show and plus it has this really beautiful little vintage design and of course I had to stick my face in it just to show you guys what it looks like but yeah I just I love this spot so much I feel like it's gonna be such a good spot for photos but yeah now we're just rapid fire placing some stuff down I went through and put down a little jack-o-lantern as like the start of the pumpkin collection on that little table and now I'm just trying to figure out the situation with this trophy here I really wanted to use the covered round table because I felt like it fit for that like small town contest type of thing like they they put this really nice tablecloth over this table for the trophy to make it look fancy but I just decided to go for the wood log piece because I feel like the height was really good I also added some hyacinth lamps and the trophy that I use is actually just a bug trophy but now we're going through and adding our last couple bits because we need to go through and include some different little pumpkin pieces as well as some leaf piles. But that is pretty much it for this build. I did go through and kind of clean some stuff up a little bit, but we will go and do a little walkthrough before the beauty shots. And I just, I love this area. It's the perfect time of day too. I love the sunset in this spot. It's so, so pretty and I'm so happy with these beauty shots. So without further ado, let's go and take a look. Alright my friends, those are the beauty shots for the pumpkin patch and the end result I'm just so happy with. So if you guys like the pumpkin patch as well, do let me know in the comments down below as well as casting your votes for the pumpkin contest. Let me know which villager you think should win. But I just want to take a quick moment to mention that this video was going to be a lot longer. Originally I had featured a little map overview where I had gone through and talked over some of the planning that I have done on my own through drawing on the map 
app on Canva, but it ended up being like an hour long uh, with that added into it, so I did cut that out. If that's something that you guys would be interested in seeing, do let me know because I can make a secondary video or a supplemental video next week, maybe during the weekdays, where I can go through and kind of show you guys some of the planning that went into this island and you guys can help me make some choices of what we should do next and where certain things should go. So if that type of content is interesting to you guys, do let me know. I definitely want to make sure that I cater this channel to the type of videos that you guys would want to watch. So if you just want speed builds, totally cool with me. Just let me know down below. I also do want to give you a quick heads up that I have gone through and kind of renovated resident services a little bit. It's nothing too crazy. I just kind of went through and messed with the pathing a little bit, changed up a couple of items and all of that type of stuff. So if you would like a renovated little tour of resident services as well, do let me know. Maybe I can combine them into one video. But without having this go on too much longer, I just want to say thank you guys again for all of the love and support. It means the world to me and you guys have helped this channel grow so, so quickly and I so appreciate every single like and comment. And if you are enjoying this content, do make sure to subscribe and get notified by hitting the bell for any future content that I post on the channel, as well as, you know, liking and subscribing and all that fun stuff. But I will see you guys again next week.